is in the building. As you can see, I think it was designed to fit my dad. Basically, it ruined my holiday. <laughs> So to start us off, I've decided to wear this shirt. So this is for me where it all began. Um, Leicester Forest East Rugby Club. I grew up in Leicestershire. Um, my brother started playing there when I was five. He was about seven or eight. Um, one of the coaches asked if I wanted to go for a run around. So I did um, and just loved it. And apparently when I got home, I was like, mum, I'm going back to rugby next weekend. I don't think she was <laughs> crazy happy about the idea, but I think I went through all the stages of the boys not passing the ball to me at the start, and then them starting to realise that actually, you know, I could catch and pass as well and I could run. Then they would, you know, give me lots of ball. And I think just before I had to leave, I think they kind of passed every ball to me and hoped that I would go and do something. So being the only girl is, is quite a daunting prospect. Um, when you went to some away games, some parents would be a bit like, oh, there's a girl playing on that team type thing and kind of snub you a little bit. But um, I think I was pretty stubborn and pretty intent on, on proving them wrong. This shirt is my Litchfield training top. Litchfield has a really, really special place in my heart. I went there when I was 17 years old um, because when I turned 18, I could play senior rugby. So a good 10 or so years. So a lot of my memories are from kind of the Christmas socials, dressed up in fancy dress and going out with, you know, we had some fantastic girls that were there and the coaches, etc. Every Tuesday and Thursday evening, we'd climb up the hill to go up and train on the top training pitch. And it felt like we were training under candlelight because the, the outdoor lights were just terrible. But um, yeah, such a good vibe, such a good feeling and um, really, really fond memories of, of playing at Litchfield. Yeah. This shirt was from my first ever England call up. As you can see, I think it was designed to fit my dad um, rather than me, but that's how the shirts were back then. They were men's fit, they were enormous. Obviously, we've still got the, the old rose that was the RFUW rose back then. When I got my first call up, I was actually um, on my post A-level holiday with my friends in Cyprus. Um, so Gary Street at the time called me, um, I think I was probably a little bit jaded as you can well imagine, thinking why on earth is he calling me? Um, and he rang me up and asked me if I wanted to be part of the, the Nations Cup squad, which was in about a month's time. Um, was I available and did I fancy it? And obviously, yes, I did. That was unbelievable to be called up at that time. But then the remaining five days of my holiday had to take a slightly different turn. Basically ruined my holiday. <laughs> Any joking. <laughs> Two of the girls who were injured um, actually filled our water bottles up with vodka rather than water. Like my stomach dropped like, in a really good way, but I just never experienced that before. She hadn't had a wink of sleep um, as most of us hadn't. For us, it kind of demonstrates a, a lot more than that. So yeah, it's really, really special to me. This one was from Dubai. This was one of my first real tastes of sevens, how much hard work it was, 35-ish degree heat. It was unbelievable. Two of the girls who were injured um, actually filled our water bottles up with vodka rather than water. Some of the girls are taking drinks in, in kind of unlabeled bottles. And as those two girls were scurrying around to try and fill up our water bottles prior to a game, they just chucked all these things into our team bottles thinking that it was water. Um, 35 plus degree heat and we were trying to chin vodka, which was not a pleasant experience, let me tell you, but it was social sermons, it was a scene, it was a lot of fun um, and good stories to come out of it. This shirt is from the 2010 World Cup. I was only 20 at the time. Obviously, we lost in the final quite close to New Zealand in the end, which was obviously heartbreaking. I think it was one of the first tournaments where people actually really started to get behind women's rugby. Obviously, it helped that it was in this country, but the coverage that we got, the amount of people that came, especially to the semi-final and the final at Twickenham Stoop was just unreal. I remember sitting on the bus prior to the final when we just arrived at the stadium um, and I could just hear noise. Like my stomach dropped like, in a really good way, but I'd just never experienced that before. I never kind of felt that support and um, people around you, I suppose. So post the uh, final whistle, you know, there were a lot of the older girls in tears, naturally really upset about the result, but it made me realise how hard I had to work if I wanted to go out and achieve something. It was a definite kind of turning point in my career. It's one of the first shirts and it's probably one of the only shirts still that actually is embroidered down the bottom. It says my name, it says England v New Zealand, Rugby World Cup final, 5th of September 2010, which um, is really cool. It might sound a bit stupid because it's like a little bit of cotton kind of <laughs> sewn onto a shirt, but I think for us, it kind of demonstrates a, a lot more than that. So yeah, it's really, really special to me. And it's one that my mum wears now when she comes and supports us. This is her favourite shirt as well, so she keeps wearing it. 
2014. So this shirt is my uh, Rugby World Cup 2014 final shirt. But a much flatter ball, Emily Scarrett! Emily Scarrett is going to go all the way! Um, so obviously it was the competition that we went on to win. Definitely my greatest achievement. I just remember feeling um, like this was our time, as cliched as that sounds. I, I think you look around a changing room and you look at, at people and I think you can believe that the people in that room are, are going to go and do it. And, and the game was tight. It did kind of ebb and flow a little bit. There was lots of penalties kicked. Their best to chase it down, but it's a seven-pointer for Emily um, But I think at no point did we not believe that we would be able to go on and, and win the game. And there it is. And post the game, there was a really special moment where there was a bar on the corner of a street that just was all white. And it was basically all our friends and family, all the English supporters, um, for somehow just all congregated together at this pub. The night didn't really end. I think some people, it got ended for them a little bit. Um, but for some of us, yeah, we managed to, to power on and power through. Katie Daly McLean, who was our captain at the time, she doesn't hide a hangover particularly well. So she was obviously front and center of the camera a lot of that day. Um, but she hadn't had a wink of sleep, um, as most of us hadn't. Um, but I think they're once in a lifetime, hopefully twice in a lifetime opportunities. Um, so yeah, it was it was really good fun, really good fun that evening. But yeah, a couple of a couple of struggling days the following. So this is the Olympic Games 2016 um, Team GB shirt from Rio. I think for me, this is probably a shirt I never thought I'd ever get. For a long period of my rugby career, rugby wasn't in the Olympics. The Olympic Games was just unreal. Like I'm a huge sports fan, so I love watching it. I love watching all the different components and different sports and how people go about their business and all of that sort of stuff as, as a fan. So to be there, I can't even describe it. It was unbelievable. And I remember everyone's like, oh, did you see Usain Bolt? Did you see Usain Bolt? And we did, we saw him in the food hall one day. He was absolutely mobbed. There were just people all around him wanting selfies, wanting autographs, wanting a little piece of him, I suppose. Yeah, obviously the result for us finishing fourth was, was a tough one to take. It was, it was really tough, but um, I think the journey and just the experience as a whole was um, incredibly special. This was a shirt from the World Cup in 2017 over in Ireland. It was a, a much younger squad. Um, and again, we went there full of hope. We wanted to go and win the World Cup. Um, and unfortunately it wasn't to be. We lost in uh, the final to, to New Zealand. Um, Many people call it one of the, the greatest World Cup finals that there's ever been, certainly for, for women's rugby, but I'd still probably would have rather played in a boring game and won. Um, but this is life. Um, it was fantastic that it was shown on uh, ITV, so it's free to air um, television for the first time ever, which was awesome. It meant that, you know, not just our fam family and friends could watch it, but, you know, genuine supporters, perhaps people who'd never watched women's rugby before could, could tune in and watch it. So the audience that we gained from, from that um, was massive and, yeah, a, a, another kind of big push on in terms of women's rugby. A tough one to take, it stung, um, really, really stung, um, but we weren't good enough on the day, so. Winning the World Player of the Year title was one of the most, I suppose, ridiculous moments of, of my career. I was told that I was nominated. Um, Nikki Ponsford told me, showed me the invitation, obviously, to, to the awards evening itself, which was um, out in Japan, where the, the Men's World Cup was happening at the time. It included going to the, the World Cup final, and then the following evening was the, the World Rugby Awards. So the whole thing was incredibly surreal. Um, this is all in the space of about a week that I was told I went and then I came home. Um, so yeah, it was it was mad. The girls were all really supportive. Obviously I got a huge amount of uh, messages after the award, um, but I guess coming back to training, they certainly bring you back down to, to earth with a bit of a bang. If you now drop a ball or slightly slice a kick, um, everybody's straight on it, giving you, giving you some grief about it. Um, and I suppose it ramps up the pressure a little bit because now you feel like you can't make any sort of mistake, um, but it's all taken in, in good kind of Part. It's um, just part of that rugby environment um, and I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> this shirt is from the Six Nations last year. 
For a couple of games during this championship, I was really lucky uh, to be able to captain the side. Sarah Hunter, our captain, unfortunately, was, was injured for a few of the games. So a huge honour for me to be able to step up into that role um, and, and lead the girls. I'm probably not the most naturally outspoken of people. Um, so to kind of be put in that role, it, it kind of pushes that side of you a little bit, which I guess is, is definitely good for me. Santa wasn't a part of the squad, but she would support me um, from afar, if you like. She's such a great kind of person to have around and obviously why she's our captain in the first place. So team talks for me are, are hard. I think you're never going to please everybody. I'm not the sort of person that's going to kind of scream and shout and beat my chest. You're in that position for a reason. And so you, it's really important that you're authentic to you and who you are. When I did, made the decision to come back from sevens to fifteens, um, I then obviously had to pick a club and I picked Loughborough because I'd been away from home for about ten years with sevens, university, various bits and bobs and it was a really nice opportunity for me to come back to the area where all my family still are. It's a bit strange I suppose when you flip between international and, and club in terms of playing against the people that you were playing with the week before. It's a nice challenge, obviously sometimes you're competing for an England shirt, um, they're your friends at England but then you come to the club club scene and you're playing against each other so um, yeah it's definitely competitive you know some of our games for club when you're playing some of the very top teams and some of the best players are, are as tough as internationals and ultimately we're all competitive people we want to go and give the best showing of ourselves so we've got to make sure we're in the right place to do that please get involved with the comments below we'd love to hear your thoughts on my jersey tales